with Shannon, who you just saw, who is so, so inspiring because this is all about being seen and how you can have a total makeover and it change your life and not be about the face at the end of the day and what they're looking at. It's about your message. And Anyway, I'm going to hand over to Shannon and let her introduce herself. So interesting because, yeah, like what we're going to talk about tonight is about um, being seen and heard. So I started my journey with this program in, I think it was August 22. That photo that you saw of me was in August 16, 22. So five days before initially being introduced to Demi. So I, yeah, I'd been working in an industry that I knew I needed to get out of and I had definitely bypassed my expiry date so my health did start to decline some and it was definitely showing up on my face so I knew changes needed to happen but I just couldn't get out of my own way like I just I knew what I wanted to do but there was like there was some force holding me back from being able to do it and for me to just put my face out there be seen be heard so yeah there was so much inner angst that just stopped me before I even could get started to do something different. Yes. And I'm curious then, like when you went through your breakthrough, it's so hard to know to go back and actually know like all of the things that you did, isn't it? I mean, so do you want to explain what your biggest fears were in life that actually made you even just want to be seen? Like what's behind that? So if you're watching, there's a massive message here, right? The message is in the message of the message. And, yeah, the fact that we really had tech issues at the last minute, absolutely incredible because I move computers. But, yeah, we're here now. If you didn't hear the video before, I will play it again towards the middle or a bit later on. But yeah, so, Shannon, share, though, I guess what actually led you to want to be seen like who are you what's your message or what was that compulsion to want to just not sit at home oh gosh it was so uncomfortable doing that though comfortable too that's that secondary gain thing until it started to show up on my face and i couldn't ignore it anymore so for me it was I just had this inner knowing and this feeling that I'm here for more. Like yeah. I'd been playing small. I'd been living this life that you know, my dad was in mining, so followed in his footsteps. The money was great. So that golden handcuff thing. So life was good. I was going on lots of holidays, experiencing so much of life, but inside there was still something missing. And I knew that I wanted more. I needed more. But I also knew that the world needed me to show up as more because I knew that I was here for a greater purpose. So the reason why I wanted to step into it was because I can see the world in disarray and I can see that the systems that we're currently following aren't serving many people on this globe. And so for me, my, my main mission is I just want women to step into their power because us ladies collectively together will nurture and love the world the way that it isn't being done now. So for me, that's my purpose and that's my drive. And that's why I knew that I had to become more of myself as a leader so that the world could see me as that and then hopefully be inspired by that for them to step into more of them. You are very inspiring. And I think more people need to see somebody like you that just went, um, got through yourself and got over yourself to show up for the greater good of what you're here to do. And you knew, didn't you? sort of knew that you're here to make a difference and change the world in your way. 100%. 100%. But while I couldn't get out of my own way, that wasn't even available. And I didn't even know how to get out of yeah. my own way. It was so hard. <laughs> what did you try? Like, what did you try to get out of your own way? 
I had done so many courses. You know what? I wouldn't even be able to name them. Oh, <laughs> there were so yeah. many. I've done so <laughs> many. I've read so many self-help books. But it was like I would get the information, but I had an issue with the application of the information. So it was like I was getting all of this knowledge, but yeah. to put it out there, that was the hard part. I didn't know what to do with it once it was there, well, once I had it. Yep. Yeah. That's it, that's sticking. Having it stick and really stay long enough to go and do do the thing. Put yourself out there. It's one of the scariest things for women. I mean, for a lot of people, just to be seen. And the internet these days, I mean, you don't know who's looking. And you can either see down that barrel there at that little lens as if it's, you know, all the millions that could see you or if it's that one that's the lens is that pupil or that one woman that needs you and I would say the simplest thing can change a woman's life and for you I think it's showing up is you heart you don't well you don't need to speak I mean that was obvious but I think that's the message is so big people complain about that and they don't have ro rosacea on their face you know what I mean so you still went in and did what you had to do in here and it wouldn't have mattered. It doesn't matter. In the end of the day, it's still a feeling and it's still a gutsy thing and it's still an internal thing, isn't it? it ultimately, entirely internal. Actually. 100%. 100% because I don't have that internal angst anymore like the stirring feelings of I'm not good enough, I'm not smart enough, oh, what else was there, I'm a fraud, like the vulnerability of, of is weak thing, like all of that suppressed stuff within me, like that energy has to go somewhere and if it can't go anywhere because I'm not expressing, then it gets, it was stuck in my body. So I don't have any doubt at all that the rosacea definitely was part of that, a result of that. And yes, more. yes. Yes, because it, it's hard to go, oh, this happened and that, but the timing's kind of coincidental, isn't it? <laughs> that, I mean, at your age and everything like that, you would have done many things for it. Yeah. While that unease was inside, it was like a part of me was never being expressed. It was like this, it was inner turmoil. There was so much inner turmoil second that like doubting myself all the time second guessing myself all the time holding myself back from conversations and i was so scared of conflict so i just didn't want to speak up in situations where i knew that could happen so it was so much holding myself back and suppressing myself in so many situations so all that head talk would have been what if this happens what if that happens what if they think this what if they think that so where do that all go? <laughs> yeah, well, I definitely don't have it anymore. <laughs> oh, my gosh. And it, what we just went through then with the tech, and it wasn't connecting to Facebook at all. Yes. Yeah, so, we just, video. Though, didn't, we were 10 minutes late or whatever by the time we realised we had to shut the whole thing down and just go a different way, different route. But even just that, we still just show, like, it's be so easy at times like that. Like, stuff, sometimes it gets so hard, different things. But if you want it badly enough and you, you come, you, you don't have that angst, <laughs> then you can kind of, oh, well, you will get through it. You always know that. Yeah. Absolutely. Can you share a bit about, like, your family or any other things about who you are as a person? Because... Even wanting to do, willing to do your own stuff is not what every woman does. I don't know if you're aware of that, Shannon, but, you know, there's a whole world out there that just, they don't know, they don't know you could. I didn't know you could get over things. I remember I was like in my 30s before I realised you could actually change your life. Wow. You could change your thinking. I think it's just an awareness, but not everyone's got that. What do they need to know about who you are so that they probably will relate? Yeah, I'm just somebody that has got over herself, I think. 
done the work. I just keep looking for answers and I just keep doing the work because I knew that there was something out there that would serve me as a woman. And I knew that the things that I had done hadn't served me. And I think b because they've been created by men. Um, so, I mean, they don't even see the world the same as we do. I mean, all of us that have been in a relationship with a man <laughs> knows that we I don't know. See People it. still pretend there's no difference. And until they stop, they hold progress back. Oh. They hold back innovation. They hold back research. They hold back solutions. They stop it and block it. And so nothing changes. Everybody thinks there's progress, but in this one area of women's entire whole health i would say whole mind body spirit soul gut brain head brain heart brain uterus brain which is the engine room of epigenetics no one's doing something that is whole with the woman in as this as yet the health system is 80 percent burdened with women in certain areas especially chronic disease and that i'm only saying that because denial of us being different stops this helping anything mm -hmm. for women and it doesn't make it feel safe for us to be women in our own skin either when it's when we're being denied or being shut down or for me like I grew up in a place where it was really hard for me to express my emotions because my parents didn't really know how to deal with that so I had to like leave home if I needed to express so it was so hard for me to do that when they were the people that I needed the most as a little girl but at the same time if they knew better they would have done better I totally get all of that but the little girl inside wouldn't have understood that so as a girl and emotions being so that that's who we are as women we're emotional beings we're cyclic we're up and down and all over the shop that's what we do but we should be embracing that and no. loving that for all of who we are so yeah so not being able to express that as a little girl i think had pretty big detrimental issues and that it just shut down a lot of me definitely shut down a lot of me see that's what i wanted people to see and here because that's many little girls that's many little girls and I think without realizing it that yourself you wanted to self-express you just wanted to go ah and not hide it anymore and inside every woman see there's this thing oh, I'm all grown up now especially in the empowerment industry you better not share that you're not like got it all together but the little girl doesn't die in us she didn't die she's still there with the same needs and the pupil that's us like your eyeballs hardly grow at all compared to your body in your whole life and we can easily forget about her and that little shannon she can express all she likes and she's sharing her feelings and she's helping other girls be able to express that's what you're doing yeah, and Maz, when I did Vulnerability is Weak, woof, I didn't realise how much of a hold that I had over my life. But once I cleared that, I mean, look, I grew up in a family where don't be a sook, don't be a crybaby. Yeah. I'll give you something to cry about, mm. right? Mm. So, so Vulnerability is Weak, those words didn't resonate with me. But then when I looked back and I, and I put it together with those phrases that I'd been told, I was like, oh, my gosh. So once I cleared that, I had happy tears for my friends. I think I rang, I messaged you at one point. I messaged another mentor at one point and I, it was happy tears. Like I actually cried happy tears for the first time in, I can't even remember how long because I didn't have access to those before. I could say the words, but I never had the feelings behind it. So it's so beautiful to be able to access a part of myself that had been shut down for my whole life, as long as I can remember. I can explain the science of that too as well. Like we do have an oxytocin generator as a female, right? And that's a part of our whole design. Tanya's actually asked for more information on the uterus brain, right, in the question. So to understand that we're female in here, like if the, just so you know if you're watching, 
the emotions of a woman, like what they're just finding out, I can't even believe this, that this is a new study, that they're calling it the vulnerability centre of the brain that they've discovered in females. But, you know, but that's a direct line to a uterus. A uterus is controlling because it's, it's all about the survival, reproduction, and so hormones. And our hormones, like no matter what sex you want to be, you got to have the hormones of it, and the hormones is the fuel. And you can you can identify however you like, but the actual truth is still to have a, a uterus is to release certain hormones and and to actually be so deep. That's where even inherited cycles run. That's the engine room where it's passed on and transferred and moved over and all of that. And that's a very deep level in our bones that what we bring through in cycles is really as a sex females and what we experience really can play out and the insecurities and emotionalizing our world so much some of those hormones are for bonding and love and that's what we're meant to feel so you couldn't feel it you see because the oxytocin generator the limbic system it's called right direct line uterus to brain the limbic system releases oxytocin in a female to water down stress because it's too damaging to the body because we don't have the outlet as much. A male has a physical outlet and also accesses peripheral so much as a natural state. And we access the, we're focused. So right from our retina, the ratio of cone and rod cells and everything, M and G ganglion cells, are all directly, all connect. it's all one, running as one. And so, yeah, that stress of having to hold your emotions in was causing the oxytocin generator to just not do what it was meant to do, but the stress of it would have made it release only to counterbalance the stress. So you wouldn't have got to the good part of it. And so the generator gets depleted. It releases it too much daily. It's meant to be there for a big spurt to bond with the baby that you will keep it alive with that much bond. And it was all meant to be so we could have these big spurts and we'll run these hormones like this all month to make just so that all happens. Like that's our design. So when we're suppressed, oppressed or something like you said, you just couldn't basically emotionalize share emotions so that actually would have started very young that you would have been over releasing your oxytocin just to counterbalance to stay healthy to some degree it's amazing if you try to shut down your femaleness which is what you do, did shutting down your femaleness the emotionalizing that just wanted to express and came at that price of stress and blocking that and it's free now and you're able to express yourself and the emotions are able to be there because there's not as much stress to use it up if that makes sense it can be complex to talk about but it's not really it just makes sense like once you just sort of know you go oh i get it like yeah right there's many layers to it it would be a really big program to just talk about that so can I just ask you, just with your family and everything like that, kids and all that stuff? Yeah, so I don't have children, Maz, so, yep, no no kids for me. So Adam is my partner. We've been together for three years. Um, yeah. So he had to jump through hoops <laughs> to catch me because yeah. I, again, didn't trust people. I'd been independent for such a long time, so it took a very long time for me to trust that he was going to stick around and also yeah be be there for me which he's yeah he's amazing so so grateful that i found him yeah. um, and then i've got two fur babies so yeah i've got my dog atlas and my cat cat man too <laughs> a bit of a traveler <laughs> so what's your goal what's your dreams and ambitions like just share a little bit about what you see that you are going to that you dream of doing or even just being more of 
Yeah, so I love nothing more than seeing people living their passion. So I love, love, like not just seeing, but when people are talking about what they love, I just that just lights me up. So I do a course that can help with that. So if people are struggling yeah. in finding that, I do a course with that. And I also just setting women's hearts free because, again, like I said earlier, once women are stepping into their power from that beautiful feminine powerful space the world's going to change so that for me is just like yep let's go this is what we need more of in the world and luckily being associated with you and all of the lovely ladies in what we do we have that network around us which is so beautiful to be a part of so so very grateful yeah yeah and all different cultures around the world too, lots of different countries, different types of people, but all on one mission just to make the world a better place and bring harmony to women's inner world, but which just makes the whole world more beautiful for men, women, everybody, and ultimately. So I, I just realised what I forgot to even say, and it's like the biggest thing of all. And, and that is that. Tell everybody, like, yes, that's how you were and you wanted to go and interview, but what are you doing now? Oh, yeah. And I was just going to say that, like, I'm absolutely loving interviewing the ladies and <laughs> their stories. So, yeah, you're talking about that passionate thing. I love it so much, the connection that we get why we when we have a chat. But what I love more about it is spreading the word because – the ripple effect of this is massive by spreading the words and spreading the stories of all of these ladies that have changed their lives and in them changing their lives the ripple effect and the people that is affecting because of one person changing their ways changing their perceptions changing their being changing their actions it's huge it is massive and it's available to anybody that's willing and open to just give it a shot. <laughs> so it's the ripple effect of a woman that transforms herself, gets rid of that deep oppression from history that's sort of like a, it's like an echo in our bones. And what a lot of people don't realise is that three generations are, al are alive at once in our generation that got us to here. So, yeah, we carry a lot of stuff that we don't know we carry so deep and unless we move those filters out of the way for our personal development we don't it doesn't go to the core and that's what we're doing isn't it we're just finally we're, we're healing history in women having them just let it go heal it and deeply so that you get to enjoy that breaking of the cycle and be one that doesn't I mean, if you never had Creatrix, for example, at all, where would you be? I probably would have been back in mining by now. <laughs> yeah. And that life seriously did not serve me at all. Like I'd outgrown it, but it was what I knew. So it was easy to be there. Easy, but very hard at the same time <laughs> because I knew in myself that wasn't where I was supposed to be. Yeah, where would you be as a person going out there or, oh. or, or going or not going out there? Where You know what I mean? I would be too exhausted, Maz. Like seriously, that lifestyle was exhausting. What that did to my body, my stress, it is so unhealthy, so, so unhealthy. So, yeah, I actually don't know where I would have been, but I do know my health would have deteriorated even further than it had. For sure. And self-esteem. Women, it, once you start going through, it's like you, you can't be the old way to even know, oh, that's right, I was a little tiny you know, rosebud. Now you're like, yeah. Yeah, people don't know that they can actually just bloom and express. And we forget how far we've come to. Like when you put that movie that little recording up just before I was like oh my god yeah that's right that was me like 16th of August 2022 so not even two years ago so how far you can come in such a short space of time and I mean if you saw that you saw my face right so let's play this again ready
use bar, resume last video, this one. You will hear this. It's funny, like I've done a lot of courses and stuff in the past and I've always had this little niggling kind of thought. I need to be interviewing people. I need to be interviewing people. And I just never followed it through. Too scared to show my face. I've also had issues with my face. So I've got a rosacea. So I didn't want to put my face out into the world. And now it's just like, oh, you know what? Just get over it. People need to see this would not have happened six months ago. (laughs) I'll tell you right now. (laughs) So yeah, I just feel like we've all got so many beautiful messages that we need to share. And the only way we get to do that is by getting out there and sharing it. So for me, I'm just going going to do heaps more interviews. I'm going to keep putting them on. I'm going to keep replaying them because you never know who's on and when they're on. So if they're just on replay, the right person's going to see what they need to see at the right time. Thank you, Creatrix. (laughs) So does anybody have questions for Shannon? Please ask them in the comments. Jump back to that in a minute. Shannon, what would you say to a woman who's where you were? They might have rosacea. They might have just the internal like angst where they just can't do it and they have a message that they've got to get out to the world or they've got a real reason why they want to be seen and what would you say to that woman that internal angst you don't have to live with that you actually can be free of it you may not believe that now But seriously, look at some interviews. I'm not the only one that's saying this. (laughs) Maz isn't the only one that's saying this. There's so many women that have been relieved from that internal struggle, whatever it is. You'll know what it is. You can hear it. If you just stop for a second and listen to that internal voice, you'll hear it. And is it serving you? If it's serving you, go for it for sure. Just keep going. But if it's not, just look us up. You've got like, it's, you've got nothing to lose. We also offer a money back guarantee. If that's what's going to get you over the line, you've got nothing to lose. But you do have to play your part because it's a partnership. Yeah, that's right. So I, I never knew you could change your life. And that's, I think that's a part too of what sort of really always drove me too, to empower women was how do you know you can even change in this world? One of the biggest things is if it sounds too good to be true, it must be like that's a real limiting belief, isn't it? Like that is that if you ever wanted to stop progress, that's the belief you need. And people go, no, but it's true. Yeah, right, okay then. Just because it has been doesn't mean it should be and doesn't mean it will and doesn't even mean it is. And people just believe their own belief system and don't know. Yeah, yeah. And we forget to question our own belief system, I think, because we that's all that you know. So until you start questioning it and then you start doubting it, like I think if you start doubting the belief system and going, there has to be another way. I think if you hear that and you feel that, then you need to look for another way. It's up to you, really, at the end of the day. we can't, No one else can do the work for you. Hmm. No one could do the work for me. That rosacea showed up on my face because I couldn't ignore it anymore. I couldn't hide from it anymore. I'd done that enough. Most people would go for makeup. They would go all over the internet. Probably billions of dollars are made every day because of women's low self-esteem of their appearance because of something like that. They will seek makeup. They will seek to conceal, to more mask and to more and more. And yeah, fine. Fine. I think there's nothing wrong with makeup either because in the oldest forms it was a way of you just kind of dress yourself up in different tribes where it would be rings on necks or it was it's just sort of there's a lot of reasons for, to express all different ways and whatever but really at the end of the day we are talking about you can change your mindset and heal the emotional pain from the past that you think is impossible to change. And it's um, what happens sometimes is when we talk to you from where we are, where we don't have those beliefs anymore, we can forget what they are. So they are things like, I am not good enough. Who do I think I am? I'm too dumb. I should not be taken seriously. 
I'm not good enough. I'm not worthy. I'm just a piece of shit. I'm just, well, I used to say the chewing gum under people's shoes, like that worthy of anything. But, you know, a lot of, we forget to mention the actual bliss or, or the actual thoughts and the thoughts all, oh, my gosh, I remember my head was full of it. Your head would have been full of it too, Shannon. It would have been, oh, I better not speak up. Or what would they think of me? Oh, my gosh, I must be bad. I must be wrong. I better be a good girl. I better, girls should be seen and not heard. You know, that sort of thing. Mm. So it's like that's what we're talking about changing, not going and doing out in the world. Actually what's happened is this transformation has happened in here, hasn't it, and healed the heart and as one you just calm. And so that's the nervous system, that's just everything, isn't it, amounts of cortisol. It would extend your life by not having so much stress in your system and it would make you a better person, leader, influencer. If you're not in moments being overcome with anxieties because it shuts the front brain, doesn't it? It shuts it down so you can't even think straight. You can't even think to make a good choice because... There's so much emotion. So you can also, oh, I love that, Tracy. And that is ironic you've said that, Tracy. You are, it is so ironic. Maria, are you watching this? Tracy just said, don't embarrass yourself. I was sharing with someone today. My whole thing was, don't, uh, you're an embarrassment. Don't, don't be that. Don't be yourself. That's embarrassing. Don't say that. Don't do that. So, yeah. I'm not interesting enough. Who am I? These are the actual things that a lot of you, that that's what Shannon changed by just doing the method that took her inside. She got her own wisdom and she just sort of realised until the whole program shut down and went calm inside and so she had a quieter mind. So if you've got, so the symptoms are overthinking, negative thoughts, anxiety, fear, resentments, jealousy, all I'm trying to think of them all, envy, resentments, uh, shame, guilt. They're all useless. Especially and guilt. Far, they hold us back from living our life to our fullest potential. Whoa. <laughs> The impact of those, those things is huge, huge. Like 44 years I lived with that. Maybe not that long because I'm only, yeah, no, it would be about 44 years. So, so you can break a cycle of 44 years where you think, I cannot change. Even if you've done a lot of personal development, hey, Shannon, like you could have done a ton of it, but you still deep down don't believe it. So that's the thing. You may do, you may be very advanced in personal development, even teaching it and leading in it, and you do the best you can. You've got the best modalities under the sun. But just this reverting little bit that happens is that's your female factor, you see, and they're not designed to go deep enough. So that just having that little bit of depth and the self, after, who would have thunk it, right, that the answer is inside each person that can't in any way, they 100% believe their own thoughts and beliefs and yet the answer's in under that that they're not and it's all bullshit the whole lot's bullshit and the only way you're not you the so that all of the books and all of the stuff it's just it's just not quite going there that's all it is isn't it? that's all it is and that's the difference of this method is that it goes under lifts all them out of the way and suddenly you just know the truth and then, guess what? Those filters are not really there to go back, the ones that were not serving. And that's really what happened to you, wasn't it? Yeah, it's amazing when it doesn't have its hold anymore. Like, I don't, yeah, like I'm not good enough and I'm not smart enough. Where They were prevalent in my life. They would stop me from even trying a new thing or doing a new, doing something new. I don't even hear it anymore. Like it does, it's not even a whisper. It's not no. there. No. It is not 
there. Because it's <laughs> resolved. So it's it doesn't just we don't a lot of things just take emotion away and leave a gap. And that gap is a gap. It so by realizing it's there it's no gaps. We're not you don't end up switched keys. <laughs> Which was what happens. We end up switched keys when you just use only emotion takeaway techniques. Oh, I learned this myself, <laughs> training them. That and what happens is it is things don't fall back into place to fill those holes in a healthy way. It's, it ends up a bit of a conundrum of wow, there's no actual beliefs that replace all the beliefs. It's not just beliefs, it's values, thoughts, it's like epigenetical deep bone oppression type deep self insecurities, as well as what happened to you last week and as a child. So it's very, these things are very deep and yeah, it's just, that's the impossibility that it looks like. But, you know, because you think about that, where can you just go and get what we get? And it's simple though, and that's the interesting thing. And it's painless too, isn't it? Like you didn't have to go and think you did. No, no, no. Like seriously, I actually do remember coming out of my first session going, what is that it? <laughs> that what just happened? happened? Yeah, and that's the most common word when women open their eyes from their little, and it's not hypnosis just because their eyes are shut, but when women open their eyes sort of at the end, and there's that silence where they're sort of, yep, right, done that little thing you said, but hang on a sec, and it dawns on them that they can't activate their own program that they just came for. And it's like, where is it? So the word most used is, that's bizarre. <laughs> the bizarre word because it doesn't go together what we're doing is such a silly it seems like silly but it's very metaphoric and working with the entire female self fully and yeah so that it doesn't marry up that you would do well what's that got to do with my problems i came in with because we haven't even gone there yet no you don't have to done and that's what is really hard for people to understand and but that's that little book I'm writing at the moment to help people just understand that it happens in nature all the time in wake up calls. People snap out of it. This isn't, and even a lot of modalities and methods work last in a lasting manner for males because they were made by males, not understanding there could be a whole uterus brain running the whole show because we all just look the same. And how dare you try and say that you're different because it might mean you're better, but. It's just simply uh, is what it is. And it's as simple as that. It's just that no one looked for simple because everything's been put on top. And so now when anyone views, they never question this stuff ever. And if me just going around behind and under question, there it was, simple. They missed it. They missed the most simple thing. As I just saw in the comments that Tanya asked me a question. So she asked, I love the confidence and clarity you have, Shannon. How do you stay grounded and authentic while maintaining such a strong presence? Tanya, I think that this has just come with time and with doing the work on myself because, yeah, I'm a completely different person to who I was. I wouldn't have been able to show up and do this. I wouldn't be able to be doing my own interviews. So I think it's just getting to a point where you know your values, you know your morals, you know who you are, and you know what you're going to stand by. So, yeah, that's how I do that. And I can feel it in my body now as well. That's the other thing. So I can feel if something's not in alignment for me. And, yeah, also follow your passions. <laughs> that's, yeah, a beautiful way to live. <laughs> wonderful wonderful that's right you can see your passion and you can feel your passion i think so i just i'm imagining a woman sitting there like this sort of watching this video and going sort of oh yeah it just i think she just needs to know that it's only life learnings that's all you're not screwed up you're not broken just because nothing else has worked doesn't mean anything. It just means that the design of them, not you're not broken. You're not too far gone. You're not damaged. You're not ruined. You're not impossible project. You're not any of that stuff. 
Is there any final message you'd like to share, Shannon? And people can catch you and watch your videos because you're out there doing interviews now and you can track Shannon Green down on Facebook. It's just mm -hmm. Shannon Green Facebook, yeah. yeah. So my business name is Seeker of Truth, so you can find me there as well. But, yeah, I just want to say you deserve it, you're worthy, and you can be free of the things that are holding you back. So just believe that and believe in you and just trust the process. Trust in you. Yeah. Trust in the world. <laughs> I think that's just a huge message. You're worth it. That's what you're worth it. Mm. And we want every girl, little girl, to know that too, don't we? And every little girl in every woman, you're worth Absolutely. it. Absolutely. And, yep, if anybody wants to facilitate a method that's got this power, as well, or you just simply want to be a part of the experience limitlessness, which is our group, and we're just out there changing the world. We're setting women free on the inside so they can go and do what they're born to do, what they would have done or be who they would have been if not for what's happened to them in the past, and especially in not thinking that they're good enough to have a transformation. So if you want to be part of that and be a part of the revolution, just PM this Uninstitute of Women or send us an email at admin at uninstituteofwomen.com. All right, love you and leave you all. Thank you, everybody, for joining in. Thanks, Maz. Thanks, everyone. <laughs> <laughs>